played one, Sam. For all time's sake. I don't know what you mean, Miss Elsa. Play it, Sam. Play as time goes by. Oh, I can't remember it, Miss Elsa. I'm a little rusty on it. I'll hum it for you. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. You must remember this. A kiss is just a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh. Ingrid Bergman wrote, It was my father's enthusiasm over my play acting that turned me into an actress. I used to dress up. My father helped me put on funny hats. He was interested in the art of photography, and he photographed me as I was having fun. Papa was mad about moving pictures, as well as stills. Eustace Bergman, an artist and photographer, shot home movies in 1918 of his little daughter. Ingrid's mother, Friedel Adler, died when Ingrid was three years old. The memory of her mother, the loving gaze of her father, were captured, held through time by the camera lens. The world will always welcome lovers as time goes. Eustace Bergman died when Ingrid was 13, leaving behind this film. Who knows, Ingrid wrote, if my father had lived, he might have gone into Swedish movies. But it was she who went into Swedish movies. Through the camera lens, she discovered the admiration and affection of Gustav Molander. The famous Swedish filmmaker had seen her screen test and suggested her for the part of a maid in a comedy called The Count of Monk's Bridge, about a group of bohemians testing Sweden's strict 1933 drinking laws. After seeing Ingrid in the movie, Gustav Molander wrote her a note saying, Where you go, there blooms the earth. Under Gustav Molander's guidance, Ingrid made half a dozen Swedish films. Mr. Molander was to comment that Ingrid had three characteristics in her work. Truth, naturalness, and fantasy. He would later say when asked if he discovered Ingrid Bergman, nobody discovered her, she discovered herself. I think what Mama discovered was her ability to express subtle emotions, humor, vulnerability, uncertainty, a glowing happiness crossed her face in a kaleidoscope of feeling. When she was 18, Ingrid met my father, Dr. Peter Aron Lindstrom, in Stockholm. They were married in a village church in Stöde, in northern Sweden. She was 21, and he was 30. Gustav Molander then made a film based on an idea of his own about a young musician who falls in love with a famous married violinist. He called the movie Intermezzo. A major actor of the time, Justa Ekman, who played the violinist, told Ingrid, while working with her, your face expresses and reflects every word I say. She had already developed her essential qualities as an actress. It was the story editor and talent spotter for the Selznick studio, Catherine Brown, who saw the Swedish intermezzo and convinced producer David Selznick to bring the young actress to Hollywood. The American version of intermezzo starred Leslie Howard as the violinist. It opened in 1939. This was the movie that took Ingrid from Sweden to Hollywood. There followed a series of Hollywood movies that brought Ingrid to public attention. Thank you. Adam had four sons, Rage in Heaven, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with Spencer Tracy in 1941. In 1942, Ingrid was lent out to Warner Brothers to do Casablanca with Humphrey Bogart. The film won a Best Picture Oscar and is still one of the most popular movies ever made. Here's looking at you, kid. The Ernest Hemingway story, For Whom the Bell Tolls, followed. 
It was a film Mother was anxious to make with Gary Cooper, an actor she deeply admired. I don't know how to kiss or I would kiss you. Where do the noses go? <laughs> Always I wonder where the noses would go. And in Saratoga Trunk, Mother again starred with Gary Cooper. In 1944, Ingrid made Gaslight, with Charles Boyer as her evil husband. George Cukor directed this movie, for which Mother won the first of her three Oscars. The movie added the expression to gaslight someone to the language. Hurry, right, Bora. There's no knife here. Yes, I put it there. Look I don't it. see any knife. I put it there tonight. No, it isn't here. You must have dreamed you put it there. Are you suggesting that this is a knife I hold in my hand? Have you gone mad, my husband? Or is it I who am mad? Yes, of course, that's it. I am mad. Ingrid Bergman was one of Alfred Hitchcock's favorite actresses, as well as his longtime friend. In Hitchcock's Spellbound, a psychological mystery, she played a doctor trying to solve a psychiatric puzzle. The movie with a dream sequence by artist Salvador Dali was a financial success. Then I saw the proprietor again, the man in the mask. He was hiding behind a tall chimney and he had a small wheel in his hand. I saw him drop the wheel on the roof. You belong in the hospital. In Hitchcock's 1946 romantic thriller Notorious, Mama played a spy being poisoned. Kerry Grant played the secret agent who handled her for a government agency. You don't look so hot. Well, sick. In Arch of Triumph, with Charles Boyer as co-star, Ingrid played the role of an amoral nightclub singer. The film was not well received. It was thought that her fans didn't like it when she played the bad girl role. Ingrid's studio publicity was built on the idea of her solid values and love of family. The image was reinforced by two roles. She played Sister Benedict to Bing Crosby's Father O'Malley in the gentle The Bells of St. Mary's. playing a nun, she played a saint in Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc was not the success Mother hoped for. She was disappointed. When Mama spoke of it later, she said she felt constrained by her life in Hollywood. She wanted other roles, other experiences, to travel instead of working on the studio back lot. She was looking for a way out. It was again the camera lens that served to 